In the next few lessons, we're gonna learn many ways to create dependent drop-down list. What do I mean by dependent drop-down list? Basically, if you see here, I have three lists with some items, and here I can select a list. So for example, if I select list two, I have another drop-down menu which will show me the items that are available in list two, and I can select one of those items. If I change my list, again, I will be able to select the items present in this list, like for example, Alissa, Biba, etc., which are here. Now, in the first few lessons, we're gonna focus on the basic concepts. So in many cases, it's not gonna be dynamic. So in case you add some data here in the list, you might have to fix your formula. But in the latter lessons, once you get comfortable with those concepts, I'm gonna teach you how to make this dynamic. And obviously, I'm gonna put a link in the description of each video so you can get access to a workbook which has all the options and also you can have the link to the other videos. So let's start with the first case, which is offset. So first let's clear those two lists. So I'm gonna select the first one, press control. I'll click on data validation. I'll say, okay, any value. Now you don't have any more dropdowns. We're gonna remove the data that we have here. And we'll start with the first menu, which is about selecting one of the three lists. So that's very simple. Under data, data validation, you click on list, you click here, and you select your three lists. And when you go here, you can select any of them. The next one is to fill this. We're gonna use the offset formula. So let's try first to get the data here, and then we can copy paste the formula in data validation. And I always like to do this because here you can see if you have a problem, but once you put it in data validation, you cannot troubleshoot it. So we're gonna use offset. We open the parentheses, and first we have our reference. So the reference will be this. You have to select up to the maximum of any of the three lists. You can even select more if you want to hedge yourself. Second of all, we need to do an offset by rows. Do I need to do this here? No, because I anyway selected the right rows. So I'm just gonna put zero. And then we need to offset by columns. So let's take an example. Let's assume that I want list two. So I need to offset this by one. So it moves to list two, right? So I'm just gonna type one here and we are not gonna use height and width. This will be for the most advanced concept. And those are optional arguments. So I'm just gonna close this and you see you're gonna get this whole list. For some of you, you might not be able to see this list because you have older versions of Excel. So what you could do is go to the formula and press F9 and you will see all the data points that you have. Now I'm gonna press escape to get back to my formula and I need to fix this one. So how to get the right index? If I use the match formula here, I'm gonna do match list two for my lookup value. My array will be this and then match type, I want exact match. So we select zero and we press enter. For my second list, I got the number two, but here I put one. So how can I match this one with this two? Basically, I have to subtract one from the result. Because for example, for list three, I will get three here, but I only need to offset by two columns. So let's copy this match formula, control C. We just go here and we replace this one by the match formula minus one. And we get the same result. So let's remove this now and we have our formula. So we go here, we copy it. We go to the right cell, press on data validation list. Let's put it here and let's say, okay. And as you can see, I have the right data. If I select list three, now I have Jan to June and so on. And as I said, if you add anything here, it will come automatically. But if you add more rows, 
then it's not dynamic unless you selected more rows and if you do you're gonna have blanks which is not always agreeable in a drop down menu so that was a quick way to create a drop down list if you like this video continue watching the next ones because you will learn the other methodologies and how to make this dynamic